Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my ICC 2020 lecture, Catalysis Within Confined Spaces. The context of my lecture today is the ongoing global transition in which we move away from fossil sources of fuels and commodity products towards renewable and cyclic sources. In this picture, scientists and engineers and catalysis scientists and engineers in particular have important roles to play. We need to develop catalysts and industrial processes that enable the production of commodity products from biomass, biogas and CO2 instead of oil, natural gas and coal. In this transition, our ability to design new catalysts and processes based on mechanistic and structural insight will be crucial. In this lecture, I will focus on studies leading to state-of-the-art insight in structural functional correlations in microporous catalysts. I selected three processes that are highly relevant to the cyclic reaction scheme. The conversion of CO2 and hydrogen to methanol, the conversion of methanol to hydrocarbons, and the conversion of ethane to higher olefins. I will show you how the confinement of the active site in the microporous material exemplified by zeolites and metal organic frameworks affect the activity and selectivity of these processes. By acting as molecular sieves, by stabilizing the active catalytic motif and by stabilizing desired transition states. And I will show you our approach to study intrinsic kinetics of individual reactions under low pressure conditions, thereby avoiding disturbing effects of product occlusion in the pores. For historical reasons, I will start with the methanol to hydrocarbons reaction in zeolites. Microporous materials, here exemplified by a zeolite, are molecular sieves. The sieving effect contributes to their shape selectivity, since only reactants with diameters smaller than the pore size are allowed to enter the pores. Furthermore, a direct correlation is observed between the size of the largest product formed in the reaction and the largest pore diameter. Products with larger diameter are occluded in the cavity where they are formed and may undergo further reaction towards smaller molecules or eventually coke. Starting with the methanol to hydrocarbons process, it is an autocatalytic reaction that is catalyzed by Bronsted acidic zeolites and zeotypes. The zeolite and process conditions may be tuned to selectively produce light olefins or gasoline fractions. In industry, light olefins production employs catalysts with cabazite topology, where only linear aliphatics may elute from the pores. Gasoline production employs catalysts with MF5 topology, where products up to tetramethylbenzene may elute. Among product molecules with diameters smaller than the pore diameter, Product selectivity depends on a delicate balance between diffusivity, competitive adsorption, and stabilization of transition state by the surrounding framework. In order to provide insight in the role played by the nature of the active site, the diffusion path, or the confinement of the surrounding pore, it is helpful to compare materials where only one of these parameters is varied at a time. I will start with an example of site selectivity in zeolites and zeotypes. This example shows the characteristics of a series of MAPO materials with AFI topology. This is a large pore topology with straight, one-dimensional tendering channels, where all form molecules are able to diffuse through the pores. The only parameter that varies significantly between the materials is the heteroatom. As shown by this slide, Heteroatoms that represent a higher Brunsted acidic strength leads to higher turnover frequency and to higher alkene selectivity, thereby clearly demonstrating site selectivity. As shown in the left-hand panel, the selectivity to propene was also higher in the materials with higher acid strength. Interestingly, the Davis group recently presented a similar series of catalysts with a cavity atrium window type AEI structure. In that structure, propene selectivity decreased slightly with an increasing acid strength, and the higher acid strength favored hydrogen transfer reactions. The opposite trends observed for the two series of materials clearly demonstrate the importance of zeolite topology for catalyst performance. Considering this effect of topology in more detail, 
This slide shows a series of zeolite materials with same acid strengths, similar acid site density, and similar crystal size, but different topology. Some of the materials are one-dimensional, while others are three-dimensional and contain intersections with larger diameter than the pores. From the left-hand graph, we observe that the larger pore size leads to higher selectivity towards aromatic products. From the right-hand graph, we observe that a small pore diameter leads to higher selectivity towards long-chain alkenes than larger pore diameters. This observation may suggest that the precursors to alkene cracking reactions are too sterically demanding to react in the, tom -top in the ton topology. Another noticeable observation from the ensemble graphs is that for all catalysts, the slope of the yield versus conversion plots, which represent the product selectivity, is constant over a large range of conversions. This means that steady state concentration of products and reaction intermediates is quickly established in the pore and cavities of each catalyst. Only at conversions approaching full methanol conversion, a new steady state is established and selectivities change. Further screening studies also show that topology influences the deactivation pat pattern in methanol conversion. On the left-hand figures, we observe that deactivation in medium pore size CETSM5 is reactant-induced, whereas in large pore zeolite beta, it is both reactant and product-induced. The rightmost plot indicates a gradual transition from one to the other behavior with increasing pore size. In studies like the one presented thus far, each zeolite crystal remains a black box, and rational design options are limited to chemical intuition. As such, a method developed by the Guinea group has had tremendous impact on the mechanistic insight in zeolite catalyzed reactions. In this method, the zeolite framework is dissolved in hydrofluoric acid, thereby releasing the re retained hydrocarbons for analysis. We combined the Guinea method with transient experiments involving isotopic labeling, and we are able to show that hexamethylbenzene is the most abundant reaction intermediate from methanol in the cavity window structure of SAPO34, that both alkenes and aromatic compounds are important intermediates in the three-dimensional tendering CETSM5, and that only alkene intermediates are important in the one-dimensional tendering CETSM22 structure. The so-called dual cycle mechanism that resulted from such measurements is now well established and has been expanded and refined by spectroscopic and computational methods to comprise further mechanistic detail for a larger range of materials. Conversely, detailed insight into another main reaction class of MTH chemistry, the hydrogen transfer reactions, was only recently achieved. We will first look at studies aimed at exploring the transition from monoaromatic compounds towards coke. It was luck or desperation that led us to replace methanol by dimethyl ether, DME, in oxygenate benzene co-feed experiments a few years ago. Doing so, we discovered that methanol, but not DME, led to a byproduct that had previously been considered a coupling product between benzene and toluene, diphenylmethane. 13C labeling experiments in which labeled methanol was co-fed with unlabeled benzene and toluene showed that the carbon originating from methanol was inserted in the methylation product as well as in the coupling product. Hence, toluene was not involved in the reaction. Using partially deuterated methanol, we further found the primary kinetic isotope effect for diphenylmethane formation, suggesting that methanol dehydrogenation is the rate determining step of reaction. The next question was where the dehydrogenation reaction takes place. Partial pressure variation experiments showed a first order rate in benzene and a zero order in methanol for the benzene methylation reaction up to a certain methanol pressure. This result is in agreement with previous findings. However, upon further increase in the methanol pressure, a negative influence on toluene formation rate was observed. Considering next the formation rate of diphenylmethane, its formation rate is negatively correlated with benzene pressure and positively correlated with methanol pressure. Overall, the partial pressure variation experiments show that the two reactions proceed on the same active site. Indeed, 
A methoxic group or methanol sorbet on the Brunsted acid site may react either with benzene to form toluene or with methanol to form formaldehyde and subsequently diphenylmethane. Such dehydrogenation reactions constitutes a first step in the conversion of monoaromatic molecules towards coke. In the next study, we targeted mechanistic insight in the transformation of alkenes to alkanes and aromatics. To this end, we co-fed oxygenate mixtures with isobutene, and to limit secondary reactions, CETSM5 nanosheets were used in the study. Many products may be formed in this reactant mixture, and I will only focus on the main trends. Among the primary products, we observe that isomerization products are not influenced by the oxygenate feed. Furthermore, the methylation product is promoted by dimethyl ether in the feed, whereas an increasing methanol feed content leads to an enhanced formation rate of isobutane, a hydrogen transfer product. Among the secondary products, the same trend was observed. DME favors methylation products, while methanol favors hydrogen transfer products. Co-feeding only 13C methanol with unlabeled isobutene showed incorporation of carbon from methanol in pentene as well as in pentadiene, suggesting dehydrogenation of methanol prior to, pent to pentadiene formation. Computational studies performed in the von Speyberg group in Ghent confirmed the hypothesis. Methanol and isobutene co-reaction leads either to direct methylation or to hydrogen transfer yielding isobutane and formaldehyde. The difference in activation energy is small, only 10 kJ per mole. For DME, on the other hand, a larger energy difference is observed between the two paths and no pathway to a dehydrogenation product was found. Together, these two studies provide insight in the hydrogen transfer reaction that connect the two reaction cycles. Based on these studies, we later performed a comparative study between methanol and dimethyl ether as feedstock for the methanol to hydrocarbons reaction. As expected from the mechanistic studies, a far higher oxygenate conversion capacity was observed when starting from dimethyl ether than from methanol. This study constitutes an example of insight-driven process design. The mechanistic studies presented thus far yield qualitative insight in methylation and hydrogen transfer reactions in zeolites. In favorable cases, even quantitative reaction rate data may be obtained under steady state conditions. However, as illustrated by the gas chromatograms in this slide, the number of competitive reactions and reactants will often preclude kinetic measurements under ambient pressure conditions. In order to harvest the full potential of computational catalysis and advanced material synthesis for rational design and optimization, more specific information about the intrinsic kinetics of individual reaction steps is needed. The temporal analysis of products or top instrument schematically de de depicted on this slide enables work under conditions that are very close to those encountered in computational studies, where the reactant and active site is often considered an isolated entity void of competing reactants. The top instrument is operated under vacuum conditions. Nanomolar sized pulses are introduced to the catalyst bed at regular intervals and proceed through the reactor by means of Knudsen diffusion. The effluent gas is analyzed by a mass spectrometer placed directly beneath the reactor. Importantly, the amount of gas introduced per pulse is typically two to three orders of magnitude lower than the number of active sites in the catalyst bed. Hence, kinetic information about the target reaction may be sampled without, ch without changing the catalyst state. The fleet of top instruments is small but growing. Our instrument is a top three instrument from Mithra Technologies. It has many features. Among them is the possibility to pretreat the catalyst under a gas flow at pressures up to ambient, the high temperature reactor that, re, uh, that enables studies up to 900 degrees C, and the time of flight spectrometer that offers better mass resolution compared to the conventional quadrupolar mass spectrometer. 
In order to elucidate the influence of confinement on the individual reactions of the MTH cycle, we studied methylation reactions of C2 to C4 alkenes. This seemingly simple reaction may proceed by two competing routes, which are indistinguishable in steady-state experiments. The two routes are the concerted pathway in which methanol and the alkene co-adsorb and react to form the higher alkene on the branched acid site. The other stepwise pathway proceeds by dehydration of methanol yielding water and a methoxy group at the branched acid site, followed by reaction with an incoming alkene molecule. Microkinetic modeling based on DFT calculations suggests that the stepwise mechanism dominates at typical temperatures of the MTH process and at moderate pressures. The zeolite of choice was CETESM-22, the one-dimensional 10-ring topology seen above to promote only the alkene-based methylation cycle. The study started in 2013 with my sabbatical stay with Yves Schurman in Lyon. During that stay, we performed successive pulsing of methanol and each alkene over CETESM-22 and observed that the methylation products were only produced during the alkene pulse. We further observed that the reaction rate would reach steady state after about 1,500 pulse pairs and that the steady state was constant even if the instrument was left overnight under vacuum conditions before continuing the pulse series. For this reason, we concluded that the stepwise mechanism was dominating and we further concluded that the surface was saturated in methoxy groups during the experiments. We were able to determine intrinsic rates for ethene, propene, and isobutene methylation at 400 degrees C and apparent activation energy for propene methylation. Good agreement was observed between experiment and theory. However, we were concerned that the observed water formation during alkene pulses might suggest a contribution from the concerted mechanism. And when continuing the study in Oslo, we decided to perform the experiments differently. For measurements of alkene methylation kinetics, we first created methoxy sites by flowing dimethyl ether through the reactor for 180 seconds at 10 to the minus 5 millibar pressure, and then evacuating the system. Alternatively, the gas flow was fed at atmospheric pressure. As observed by the data in the upper panels, formation of alkenes was observed for several hours after the treatment, demonstrating reaction of residual DME and methoxy sites. After two and a half hours of evacuation, the amount of products formed from the methylated catalyst was negligible compared to the reaction rate between an ethene pulse and residual methoxy species. Notably, flowing DME at ambient pressure for 180 seconds and then evacuating led to much higher product formation during evacuation and furthermore to lower propene formation rate when pulsing ethene after two and a half hours of evacuation. This result suggests that a higher fraction of the methoxy species originally formed during DME flow is consumed by residual hydrocarbons in the zeolite after higher pressure treatment. Low pressure treatment was therefore selected as a standard pretreatment procedure. Pulse titration using propene suggested that about 5% of the branched acid sites in the zeolite were covered by a methoxy species after evacuation. Intracrystalline diffusion is an inherent part of any reaction in microporous catalysts, and our next measurements were directed towards the diffusivity of alkene reactants and products in the CETESM-22 sample. Importantly, no loss of alkene was observed through the catalyst bed during alkene pulsing, indicating that under top conditions, the coverage of active sites is sufficiently low to prevent conversion of the alkenes alone. Furthermore, we observed increased broadening of the transient response with lower temperature and increasing alkene delay with increasing chain length, reflecting the strength of their interaction with the Brunsted acid sites. However, the Van Hoff plots revealed smaller differences in adsorption strength between the alkenes than expected from literature. We are still not in position to fully explain this observation and resorted to a model-free description of alkene diffusion in the zeolite pores. Turning finally to the methylation experiments, we observe linear arrhenius plots for all reactants and trends in the apparent activation energy that corresponds with the DFT calculations. However, the absolute numbers deviate, and as will be seen on the next slide, the reason is a different resting state of the catalyst in the two cases. 
due to the dominantly free Brunstead acid sites during the latest series of top experiments and their strong interaction with each alkene. The resting state of the system is alkenes adsorbed on Brunstead acid sites in the pores, not alkenes in the gas phase. Correcting for the new resting state, we observe excellent agreement with the data obtained previously in LEO and with computational data. We may safely conclude that methylation of isobutene is sterically hindered in CEDASM22, resulting in a low isobutene methylation rate in spite of a lower activation energy compared to ethene and propene. In this first part of my lecture, I have shown you that synthesis tools are at hand to produce series of well-defined zeolite and zeotype model materials well beyond those I have shown you today, enabling the elucidation of structure-function correlations. We have seen that measurements of intrinsic kinetics of individual reactions in zeolites are feasible by experiments in two different top instruments. We also see that DFT estimations compare favorably to top-derived kinetic parameters. However, further studies are required to fully deconvolute interrelated diffusion, sorption, and reaction steps. Overall, strong experimental and computational tools are available for further zeolite research. Top reactor conditions are far from those encountered under conventional reaction conditions. As will be seen from our next example, even intermolecular interactions in zeolite pores may now be captured by computational models. In this example, we selected a simpler reaction system, ethene oligomerization. Ethene oligomerization has received increased attention after the shift from naphtha to shale gas as cracker feedstock as an alternative route to butene and propene formation. Industrially, ethene oligomerization is carried out over homogeneous nickel complex catalysts, and there has been a drive towards developing heterogeneous catalysts in the recent years. Nickel containing zeolites are among the study systems, and clear correlation has been found between divalent nickel ions, ion exchange onto the Brunstead acid site, and activity for the ethene oligomerization reaction. In our group, we focused on the one-dimensional 12-ring AFI structure for detailed studies of the ethene oligomerization reaction. In this case, we used the zeolite analog and ion exchange about one-third of the Brunstead acid sites with nickel. From catalytic testing at 4 to 26 bar pressure, we observed that only linear butins and hexene were formed in detectable amounts, with the butin selectivity higher than 98%. As observed from the left panel, an activation energy around 35 kJ per mole was observed at the highest and lowest pressure, indicating that the same mechanism operates in the whole pressure range. The middle panel shows a reaction order in ethene, around 2 for both butene and hexene formation. Finally, the right-hand panel shows that 1-butene and 2-butene are formed in similar yields at all conditions, but with decreasing 1-butene to 2-butene ratios with increasing ethene conversion. Two mechanisms have been proposed for this reaction. The metallocycle mechanism, in which only alpha olefins are formed, and the cosi arlman mechanism, in which both 1 and 2 alkenes are primary products. Using static DFT calculations for the nickel AFI system, we found that the cosi arlman mechanism is energetically favored compared to the metallocycle mechanism. However, comparing this result to the experimental data, there is one important difference. The DFT model fails to capture the second order reaction rate that was observed experimentally. To investigate whether additional ethene molecules in the zeolite pore could influence the reaction, we simulated the pore filling under experimental conditions using Monte Carlo simulations and next pursued density functional theory-based molecular dynamic simulations in the Vance Paper group in Ghent. And indeed, those simulations revealed an important effect of surrounding ethene molecules in the zeolite pore. In this slide, the left panel shows free energy profiles for ethene coordination to the ethene nickel ethyl complex derived from DFT-MD simulations. 
The inset shows histograms of nickel aluminum distances, illustrating that the doubly and triply ethene coordinated species are detached from the framework and more mobile than their anchored counterpart. The middle and right panels show snapshots from the simulations of the nickel ethyl species, including the trajectories of the nickel and the alpha alkyl carbon atoms. Higher rotational freedom is observed. The numbers in the table show the reduction in the activation energy of CC coupling when, with the coordination of one or two ethene molecules to the reaction complex. With the coordination of one ethene molecule, the activation energy decreases from 77 to 37 kilojoules per mole, overlapping with the activation energy observed experimentally. Addition of a second ethene molecule leads to an increased activation energy, but the desorption of that extra ex ethene molecule requires only 20 kilojoules per mole, returning to the more favored intermediate. Importantly, these results imply that the stabilization of the transition state offered jointly by the confinement of the pore and the additional ethene molecules enhances the rate of the ethene dimerization reaction. Another important finding, in agreement with the more than 98% butene selectivity observed experimentally, is that the predicted butene formation rate is two orders of magnitude higher than the hexene formation rate. The simulations indicate steric restrictions as the cause for the lower conversion rate of butene. The butyl species does not have the same rotational freedom as the ethyl species in the detached nickel complex. This example demonstrates again how the confinement offered by the zeolite pore may alter reaction selectivity. The full reaction scheme shows the dynamic character of the reaction complex, shifting between the anchored and mobilized states throughout the reaction cycle. Microkinetic modeling supports the second order reaction rate observed experimentally. As a summary and outlook to the first two parts on zeolite catalysis, we see that recently developed computational tools are available for reliable description of zeolite catalyzed reactions. Experimental tools are available to provide mechanistic details and intrinsic kinetic parameters as benchmark for further descriptive and predictive modeling. In my last example, we move to metal organic frameworks or MOFs. MOFs are potentially perfect scaffolds for tailoring catalytic sites towards a desired reaction due to the vast opportunities to vary nodes, linkers and framework topology. Their downside compared to zeolites is poorer stability, and the mechanistic insight in MOF catalyzed reactions is still at an early stage. CO2 hydrogenation to methanol is the most suitable process to be carried out in MOFs, since thermodynamics favor methanol formation at low to moderate temperatures. From this plot, we further observe that thermodynamics favor methane formation over methanol formation at all temperatures and that CO formation is favored at the medium to high temperatures. Hence, catalyst selectivity is a major issue of this process. In our search for a MOF-based CO2 hydrogenation catalyst, we selected a material consisted of platinum nanoparticles embedded in a UIO67 type zirconium MOF. UIO67 is isoreticular with the archetype UIO66 material which consists of zirconium oxide clusters, ideally surrounded by 12 benzene dicarboxylic acid linkers. However, the real linker to node ratio is often less than ideal. This is due to so-called missing linker defects. The residual open zirconium sites are instead capped by anionic and neutral species like hydroxide, chloride, formate, or acetate, depending on synthesis and process conditions. Missing linker defects may eventually be healed by anion exchange, so like by soaking the material in a solvent that contains excess linker molecules. Another feature of zirconium clusters is their dehydration when heated about 250 degrees C. The dehydrated zirconium cluster is only slightly deformed compared to the hydrated version. Hence, dehydration does not affect material stability, and rehydration is observed upon cooling in moist gas. 
Returning to our Platinum UIO67 system, it was obtained by impregnating a UIO67 material containing 10% bipyridine linkers with tetrachloroplatinum salt, by which platinum dichloride coordinated to the bipyridine linkers. After pretreating the material for three hours in hydrogen flow, XOS measurements revealed the formation of platinum metal nanoclusters. The UIO67 platinum material is exceptionally stable under process conditions, as shown by the, its retained specific surface area, XRD pattern, thermogravimetric stability, and crystal shape maintenance during pressing and sieving, pretreatment, and catalytic testing up to 280 degrees C. Considering next the platinum nanoparticle function, platinum metal alone is a poor methanol formation catalyst. When testing the CO2 hydrogenation activity of platinum metal deposited on inert support materials such as carbon and silica, only reverse water gas shift activity leading to CO formation is observed. With alumina support, a certain methanation and methanol formation activity observed, and this is also the case for zirconia support. Several prior contributions have reported a favorable role of zirconium towards methanol formation, and we therefore performed comparative tests of platinum zirconia and UIO67 platinum up to 30 bar pressure and 240 degrees C. The study revealed a dramatic difference between the two materials. While the moth based material showed up to 42% methanol selectivity, Platinum on zirconia gave a maximum of 6% methanol selectivity under the same conditions and with similar CO2 conversion. Overall, considering the exceptional stability and appreciable methanol selectivity of the moth based catalyst, it constitutes a perfect starting point for elucidating mechanistic details about methanol and byproduct formation on the metal support interface and to elucidate the role played by the zirconium node in this reaction. As a first approach to elucidate the mechanism of methanol formation in the moth based catalyst, we turn to in operando IR studies. The most abundant peak observed was assigned to CO adsorbed on platinum, but there was another smaller peak that caught our attention. This peak has previously been assigned to format species bound to open zirconium sites in zirconium moths. Transient HD exchange experiments revealed for, uh, that the format species were active. The hydrogen containing format peak soon disappeared and was replaced by a peak corresponding to deuterated format species. Interestingly, the intensity of the deuterated species was two orders of magnitude higher than the hydrogenated format, suggesting an inverse kinetic isotope effect in format formation. An inverse kinetic isotope effect is a signature of rate-determining hydride transfer reactions, leading to a hybridization change from sp to sp2 or from sp2 to sp3. When repeating the isotope transient experiment in the test reactor, we observed that HD exchange proceeded rapidly in methane, but more slowly in methanol. Indeed, when comparing the transient of methanol with that of the format species, we observe full overlap. This result strongly suggests that formid species are key intermediates in methanol formation, as also suggested previously for other CO2 hydrogenation catalysts. Considering next the formation rates of the three reaction products, CO, methanol, and methane, we observe that the HD exchange does not affect the CO formation rate, but leads to an inverse kinetic isotope effect for both methanol and methane formation. Hence, the rate determining step of formation for both products is hydride transfer leading to hybridization change. A second observation from these graphs is that the kinetic isotope effect is installed much more rapidly in methane than in methanol. This result demonstrates that formate cannot be the intermediate to methane formation, and hence that methanol formation is mechanistically separated from methane and CO, except for hydrogen activation. Because of the high abundance of formate species observed by FDIR, we suggest formate hydrogenation as a rate determining step of methanol formation. The postulated mechanism for methanol formation 
supported by DFT modeling, is absorption of CO2 at the interface between the platinum nanoparticles and an open zirconium site, followed by hydrogen activation and hydride transfer to CO2, leading eventually to, to formate and subsequently to methoxy and methanol formation. Let us now proceed to a more quantitative analysis of the reaction. This table shows the number of active intermediates and their mean residence time for each product obtained from transient 13C, 12C exchange experiments. We observe that the number of intermediates leading to CO formation is about half the number of exposed platinum atoms derived from TEM analysis. The residence time of those intermediates is rather low compared to the other products. The number of intermediates leading to methane is an order of magnitude lower and with four times higher residence times leading to low methane formation selectivity. The number of intermediates leading to methanol formation is similar to those leading to CO formation but with eight times higher residence time leading again to rather low selectivity at one atmosphere pressure. Taking into account that methanol is formed via formate species attached to open zirconium sites at the interface between the platinum nanoparticle and the moth, the missing linker defects in the material suggest a maxim fo maximum formate to platinum ratio of 0.2. This means that additional zirconium sites must have been made available to form it. We turn to DFT modeling to investigate this question. The computational data showed that the energy gain of adding platinum atoms to the platinum nanoparticle is sufficiently favorable to displace linker molecules from the zirconium node. This result may explain the larger average platinum nanoparticle size compared to the cavity size of UIO67. Conversely, the computational data showed that linker displacement by format formation is energetically disfavored in agreement with the excellent stability of the UIO67 platinum catalyst under reaction conditions. In conclusion, the active entity of the UIO67 platinum catalyst is a platinum nanoparticle surrounded by zirconium nodes with open zirconium sites, some detached from the MOF lattice and some still having intact linker bonds. To further verify the role played by open zirconium nodes, we subjected the UIO67 MOF to a linker exchange procedure that resulted in healing of 90% of the missing linker defects. After platinum impregnation and pretreatment, the healed material was subjected to catalytic testing and compared to the original UIO67 platinum catalyst. As seen from the left-hand panel, the CO formation rate was similar of the two materials, but the methane and methanol formation rates both decreased by more than 50%. The right-hand panels show that the transient behavior of product be formation was mainly unaltered by the healing procedure. Indeed, the responses of CO and methane overlapped completely between the two materials, whereas the transient for methanol formation was also very similar. Based on the kinetic data obtained, we postulate the following formation mechanism for methane on UIO67 platinum. CO is adsorbed at the interface between platinum and an open zirconium node side, followed by hydride transfer from platinum, leading eventually to methane formation. As a final issue, we address the impact of zirconium node hydration on the CO2 hydrogenation reaction. During pretreatment in hydrogen at 350 degrees C, we observed on the left-hand plot by FDIR that the OH signals from the node disappeared from the spectrum. Under reaction conditions, we observed that the hydroxyl signal is partially restored. Concurrent with zirconium node hydration at the onset of reaction, we observed in the left-hand panel of this slide an initial peak in methanol production. Concurrently with the decrease in methanol production rate, we observed that water produced in the reaction reached the reactor in effluent. A similar effect is observed for methane in the right-hand panel. Prehydration of the node before the onset of reaction removes the initial peaks for both products, but lead to the same steady state formation rate as for the dehydrated sample. 
DFT modeling ascribed the initial production peaks to competitive adsorption at the open zirconium sites. When co-feeding water with the CO2 and hydrogen feed, we observe negligible influence on the CO and methanol formation rates, but substantial negative influence on the methane formation rate under steady state conditions. We ascribe the different effect on methanol and methane formation rates to the much stronger adsorption of formate to open zirconium sites compared to water, CO and methanol adsorption. In the third and final part of my lecture, we have seen that the combination of model material synthesis, experimental and computational studies revealed key mechanistic and kinetic information about the MOF-derived catalyst for the CO2 hydrogenation reaction. Unraveling the rate determining step of the desired and undesired reactions, as well as the influence of competitive sorbates yield important hints to further catalyst optimization. Coming now to the end of my lecture, I hope that the results presented for the three selected catalyst system may have provided especially younger researchers and students with new insight in zeolite and MOF-based catalysis systems and in the available experimental and computational tools. I also hope that these studies may inspire you to break new barriers in the rational catalyst design in the next decades. Before leaving the podium, I would like to acknowledge some of the people who contributed to these studies, in particular the following PhD and postdoc students. Juan Martinez Espin for his work on hydrogen transfer reactions in zeolites, Rasmus Brugoy for computational studies of methylation and oligomerization reactions, Mustafa Kemürkü for experimental easing oligomerization studies, and Sebastian Gütterö for his studies of MOF-based CO2 hydrogenation reactions. Great thanks also to our talented young permanent researchers, Yevgeny Redekop for top studies, Ainara Nova for computational modeling of molecular and MOF-based catalysts, Sigur Öyen Ödegård for synthesis and structure elucidation of MOFs. A general thank to my professor colleagues. Outside UIO, I would like to thank Veronique van Speybroek and Christophe de Wispelere for computational studies of zeolite-based systems, Egil Skulason and Sri Hasha Pulumati for computational modeling of the platinum MOF system, Pablo Beato for long-term collaboration in the zeolite field, Yves Schurman for the initial TAP study, and the late Cairo Lamberti for XAS contributions to all studies. Last but not least, I would like to thank you for your attention.